Pony Fantasy V Exodus of the Void by G.M. Blackjack Chapter 19 Break In, Break Out Ugh, Rainbow Dash moaned. Ugh. Dash, quiet, Applejack muttered. My head is not in the mood for pained moaning right now. Twilight sighed as she stood up, shaking her head. Well, that was a warm welcome. She looked at their surroundings. Five mares in a cell obviously not suited to hold more than three. It was quite cramped, and as she tried to make her way to the bars, she stepped on Starlight. Ow! She yelled. Hey! Sorry, Twilight said, finally getting to the bars and looking out. She saw nothing but an empty hallway. She smirked. No guards. Girls, it's escaping time. Rainbow nodded, shuffling up to the door, bumping into Rarity on the way, and preparing to melt the door down. Ah, ah, ah! A very confident and amused feminine voice said. A unicorn strode into the room. A yellow coat, paired with a ketchup and mustard mane that resembled bacon. Did you really think we were stupid enough to leave you without a guard? Rainbow Dash growled. We can take one measly unicorn. The unicorn laughed. Oh, the overconfidence! It's priceless! She chuckled. Starlight shoved Rainbow Dash out of the way, a scowl on her face. You! You blew up my ship! Oh, pfft. Are you still mad about that? Really? I let you live, didn't I? She sneered at Starlight. Starlight lit her horn. I'm going to... The unicorn lit her horn as well, causing Starlight's magic to begin smoking. The powerful mage's eyes widened in pain. Ow! That's hot! It's called Burnout, Glimmy. The unicorn chuckled. There'll be no magic coming from that horn for a while without serious pain. <laughs> Such fun. I think I'll do it to all of you. That's enough, Sunset, a very familiar voice said, sending chills into four of the mares. A blue armored humanoid stepped into view, towering over Sunset and leering towards the cell. Exdeath continued with his deep, unnatural voice. They may be of use to me. Damaging them will only cause certain other parties to act rashly. What? Sunset asked. Pinky has gathered an army on the big bridge, he said, as the ponies and gargoyles rolled a giant mirror into the room. I need to send them a message to dissuade them from taking unwise actions. He chuckled. You otherworldly mares are about to become so useful to me. We'll never help you, Applejack yelled. And here I was thinking you were honesty. Of course you will, he cackled. All you have to do is stand there. Twilight took a step back. She didn't like where this was going. Exdeath pointed the mirror at them and cleared his throat. He pressed a button and a soft beam of light swept across the five imprisoned mares. They felt nothing as it passed over them. Then the mirror pointed upwards and shot a light through the ceiling into the air, projecting an image of the five mares into the sky that ponies could see for miles around. Listen up, Pinkie Pie! Exdeath's voice boomed over the land. I have your foolish friends imprisoned in my castle. Stop the advance of your army or they will die. Then he cut the transmission of the image and ordered the mirror to be rolled away. Sunset? Yes, my ever so shiny lord. Watch them closely. Pinky's going to try to break them out. Don't fight them unless you have to. Exdeath turned one last time to look at the mares. You should have stayed on your doomed world. All you have accomplished by coming here was make the situation worse. Try and live with that. Then he left. Starlight turned to all of them. You're from another world? 
Now's not the time to be hung up on that, Twilight said. We need to get out of here. Suddenly, all the walls lit on fire. The mares retreated into the center of the cell, barely able to fit. The fires died down, and they could hear Sunset cackling. Ah, you are so stupid! Okay, let's look at it like this. No talking, no plotting, and no using magic powers. I'll be able to sense it coming out of your horns, or wings, or whatever. Talk, I burn you. Use telepathy, I burn you. Look at me funny, I burn you! She smirked. So no, you aren't getting out, little ponies. You're the same size as us, Rainbow Dash retorted. For her trouble, she got a fireball to the face. No talking, Sunset said, glaring at them. Twilight hated to admit it, but she didn't think they could get out easily. She considered just blasting Sunset with magic, but she had a feeling that wouldn't work, and she'd just light all of them on fire. Perhaps if Rarity made all of them faster and put some regeneration on them... But she couldn't tell Rarity the plan! <sighs> she couldn't tell anyone the plan. Great. Guess they had to wait for Pinky to save them. Pinky appeared in a random pot in Nexteth's castle. She pulled herself out of it, revealing her black outfit that wished it was on a real ninja. Pinky quietly told the suit to stop complaining about it. She leapt behind a wall and appeared on the ceiling, crawling like a spider over Exdeath's gargoyle guards. Then she stood on top of one of their helmets, playing leapfrog with their heads. A few thought something was up, but when they looked upwards, there was no evidence of the pink pony at all. She quietly bounced around the walls, occasionally leaving little cakes around to mess with the guards. She was great at being sneaky. She appeared right in the middle of the room her friends were being kept in. Hey guys, I'm great at being sneaky! Sunset face hooved. I was told you were a powerful idiot, but not this much of a powerful idiot. Her horn lit up with intense fire and engulfed the room in flames. She grinned. Ha! Burned up in an instant. Suddenly, the stone floor shook, a brick flying out of the ground Sunset was standing on and smashing her into the ceiling. Then another brick came from nowhere and tossed her out the window. Aye! She squealed. I meant for this to happen! Joke's on you lot! I am more powerful in the air! She hit another structure with a thunk and her eyes rolled back into the, her skull. The flames cleared, revealing a giant, muscular man standing beside Pinky. Got him, he said in a deep, gravelly voice. The imprisoned mare's jaws dropped. What? Oh, that's just Titan, Pinky said. Picked him up recently. Found him in my old basement. He's great. Done punching, Titan said, fading away. The mares stared at Pinky in disbelief. Come on, Pinky said. We gotta go. The alarm's been raised and Sunset will be back soon. She opened the cell door by punching the lock. She pulled Starlight out first. Nice to meet you. Name's Pinky Pie. Now let's get out of here. Uh, nice to meet you too, Starlight said, looking a little amazed. The six mares didn't waste any time scrambling out of the cell. Okay, Pinkie Pie yelled. Time to bust out of this castle and get to the bridge where the army is. Where did you get an army? Rainbow Dash yelled. You've only been here a few days. I have my ways, Pinky giggled. They ran into the main hall, the palace doors clearly visible, as were several dozen gargoyle guards in full armor. The mares turned to look at each other and then smiled. All right. Rainbow Dash said, time for some beatdown! Starlight pouted as the other five rushed the gargoyles. But, but my horn is burned out! Ah, curse you, Sunset! The Warriors of Light and Twilight made quick work of the guards now that they had an even playing floor. Fire blasted from Rainbow Dash's wings, followed by electricity that went right through their armor. Rarity slowed all their movement to a crawl, while Applejack 
lopped their heads off. Twilight burned a few to a crisp, and Pinky duplexed two at once, just for the sake of it. Starlight's jaw dropped. That was... some impressive teamwork. Yeah, Rarity said, turning to look at Rainbow Dash. It was. Rainbow Dash smiled before catching herself. She shook her head, glared at the door, and ignored Rarity. She flapped her wings, and an enormous ball of fire engulfed the castle doors, blowing them out of the doorframe. They stepped outside, into a strong breeze. I love wind, Pinky said. I missed it so much. The six mares heard commotion behind them. The rest of the castle was waking up. May I suggest something? Starlight asked. Run! All the mares obliged, tearing across the land, Pinky in the lead. The bridge is this way, she yelled. Rarity cast haste on them, improving their speed significantly. Then they saw it, the big bridge. They realized, first off, that it wasn't a normal bridge. It was a tremendous bar of blue-white stone that twisted in a helix pattern across the ocean. They could not see the end of it. How is that a bridge? Applejack asked. After a bit of walking, you'd just fall off the edge. It's a piece of art that uses gravity to inspire others, Piggy answered. You always stick to the bricks while on the bridge, allowing you to walk upside down. She coughed. And it's the only way off this island without swimming through Chandra-infested waters. Rarity blinked. Pinky, what are- No time to explain, we gotta go now! Piggy yelled, running onto the bridge. The others following behind. Their hooves clacked on the strange stone, echoing as they slowly turned upside down. This is very disorienting, Applejack complained. The ocean is not supposed to be up! Get used to it! Pinky yelled back, we're going to have company! Gargoyles flew in from all sides, landing on the bridge from all angles. Some walking on the ground beneath them, others flying in the air around the ponies. Ifrit! Pinky yelled. The Adolan appeared. Finally! Feel the hellfire, Cretans! The fire burst from Ifrit, blowing the gargoyles away. Rainbow Dash blasted the remaining with a toxic spell all of them falling either into the ocean or onto the bridge itself. They all galloped away. Wow! Pinky exclaimed. I don't think I realize just how OP we've become! Starlight grunted. I want to be OP too. Stupid burnt out horn. Aha! Sunset yelled, appearing from the sky with a flash of fire. Glad you like it! The f mares stopped moving upon seeing Sunset. The fiery unicorn grinned. Now it's my turn to lay the smack down on you! Pinky smiled. Girls, I got this. She produced a giant rubber hammer. Let's duel, Sunset Shimmer! Sunset stood on her hind legs and constructed a halberd made entirely of fire. Accepted, Pinkie Pie! Let us fight like honorable mares on a bridge made of moonstone! On guard! Touché! Cleb... Shea battle line! Once over, attack! Pinky's hammer hit Sunset's halberd head on, stopping both mares. Sunset took the moment to create another flaming halberd and swing it at Pinky, only to have it stopped by Pinky's other front hoof, protected by an oven mitt. Oven mitt? Such underhanded tactics! Sunset announced. Eh, you have two floating halberds, Pinky pointed out, giggling. Just be glad I'm not using Titan again. He'd totally crack you. You did not just use a rock-based pun, Sunset yelled. Shame on you! She lunged at the pink earth pony, her body on fire. Pinky returned the favor with a tidal wave spell that blew Sunset back. She lifted her now damp self off the ground. I shall not be made a fool by the likes of you! She slipped on the water and crashed headfirst into the ground. Starlight clapped. Good job, Sunset! You were right! You weren't made a fool by her! You didn't need the help! Shut it, Glim Glam, Sunset said, glaring at them. Then she looked behind them at the castle. A light bulb went off in her head. I just remembered! I have somewhere to be! Noodles and tater tots! 
then she was gone in a flash of fire. Well, that was... something, Twilight said. Come on, we need to hurry. She stopped as she felt a tremendous magical surge from behind them. She turned to see the castle they had just escaped from glowing, taking energy from the four giant crystal towers she hadn't noticed before. A sphere of energy began to expand outward at extreme speeds. Bubble us! Pinky yelled. Twilight complied, encasing everyone in a magical bubble seconds before the energy reached them, impacting the bubble and tossing them into the air at supersonic speeds. The lavender sphere shot up out of the atmosphere, the blue of the sky vanishing quickly and being substituted with the starry sky usually seen only at night. The mares began to float as the lack of gravity asserted itself. Rarity's eye twitched. I said I didn't want to do this again! Starlight blinked. Again? You've had a magical shield toss you into space before. Well, no, Rarity responded. Just the last time I was in space, we crash landed into the ocean. Starlight nodded. That explains a lot. Twilight looked out of the bubble at the stars, a mixture of fear and wonder in her mind. Okay, Applejack said. Enough sightseeing. How do we get back down? Twilight's stomach sank and her pupils dilated. Er, well, uh, I don't know. Alright, in this chapter, I get the f the niggling impression that Starlight Glimmer and Sunset Shimmer know each other somehow before? Maybe they have an outstanding rivalry? Hmm. I wonder if Starlight's actually- hold on. If, if she has a ongoing rivalry with Sunset Shimmer, and Sunset Shimmer works for X-Death, maybe- Starlight's boat getting destroyed wasn't red, um, X-Death just happened to blow it up, but she's an enemy of his, in some fashion. You know, she's been fighting someone who works for him. If they were working for him before, rather than he just co-opted them, which seems likely, given their interactions, Starlight may have been a long-standing enemy of his. Interesting. Or maybe they went to magical college together and one of them or the other kept outshining the other in their magical college studies. Both are perfectly reasonable explanations for their behavior to each other. But I'm fairly confident one way or another they have met before and had some arguments before this. After all, I don't think anyone used Starlight's name before she called her Glimmy. Yeah, no one did. So, they've met before. I don't know how, but they seem to have an ongoing rivalry, enemy ship, something going on. Anything else? Oh yes, and Rainbow is still being just as cold and uncaring towards Rarity as she can possibly manage. I... Guys, guys, hi. Wow. Well, I was going to bring up my ninja suit and have it give us some commentary on its feelings about how Pinky treated hers, but I can't seem to find it. Too bad. It would very well know the experience of being worn by someone who has the skill set, but not the mindset. Shame they can't compare notes. Anyway, thank you for listening. I hope you had a wonderful time, and I hope you continue to have a wonderful time, whatever time you're listening to this. Goodbye, everyone. Have a nice time. Day. Thing. Year. All of it. Good life. And to all a good night.